We're back continuing the conversation with Robert Garcia, candidate for mayor of the city of Long Beach. Robert, uh, all of us registered voters got dozens and dozens of mailers in the primary, and now we're starting to get them in the runoff. And uh, I, at least 10 came from your campaign, which I hold up here in a fan-like <laughs> array. And here's my question to you. You, you have uh, uh, advocated appropriately the importance of economic development in our town and jobs, and yet none of your mailers were printed here in town. How come you did not use a local printer to print the tens of thousands of dollars worth of printing which you spent on these mailers? Well, that's actually not true. And so we use a variety of printers. But, uh, for example, Seaside Printing, we've done all of our letterhead there. We've done our stickers there. We've done our, our, our uh, yeah, but, signs there. But none of these mailers were printed at Seaside Printing. And I, I will also add that the same is true of your opponents as well. But I'm asking you because you're running. Oh. How come... How come you don't use a local printer, whether it's Seaside or some other union local printer, uh, to spend these tens of thousands of dollars which your campaign is spending? Well, we've, we have spent thousands and thousands of dollars at, lo at a particularly one local printer, which is Seaside. Uh, and that includes, by the way, mailers that we did in the, la in the last campaign and the, door and the door hangers we did. So we've used a variety of printers. Uh, different printers also have different specialties. They work with different mail houses. Uh, but we have used uh, sig and poured a significant amount of money into uh, one particularly local printer. Uh, and some of those are, are printed at some other mail houses because of the relationship they have with the mail brokers. But we're, we have a variety of different printers that we use, including local. Okay, um, fair enough. Uh, another question I wanted to ask you uh, was, uh, I noticed on a recent council vote involving donning and duffing settlement, uh, you excused yourself uh, from the vote and returned uh, shortly thereafter. And, and some may view that as uh, ducking the vote for political expediency. Could you just address that issue? Sure. Well, first of all, I, I mean, I, I took that vote in closed session. And so that's, you know, as far as voting for it, I've voted on that issue before. Uh, but there isn't, I mean, people, by the way, have to, on occasion, council members get up and leave. People have to use the restroom. They have to do a variety of things. And so on occasion, people will leave, will leave and come back. And so I needed to use the restroom. And when I have to use the restroom, I will go take that break. Well, in fairness to you, you're not uh, the first uh, council person historically to, uh, to leave during a meeting. And as I understand uh, uh, the way things work, it's the mayor's prerogative to decide whether or not to excuse a person once they've been seated. And should you be elected mayor, what would be your policy if people wanted to leave uh, so they could avoid a vote? Well, first of all, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think people are asked if they're voting or votes or not. The reality is that your council meetings sometimes, as you know, can last five, six, seven hours, depending on, on, the, on the night. Uh, so if People can't. People have uh, to do or use the restroom or go grab a bite to eat because the meetings start at five or they're in closed sessions before that. I think they're they're adults and they're they're able to make those decisions. And I'm I'm certainly not going to micromanage when they need to use the restroom or grab a bite to eat. Okay. Uh, besides jobs and economic development, what would be some of the uh, challenges that you would like to address as mayor of the city? Well, I think one is uh, is education. I mean, I think you know, as an educator myself. Uh, we have an incredibly rich educational system in Long Beach. If you think about Cal State Long Beach as an asset, you think about Long Beach City College, one of the largest community colleges in the, in the state of California, and our, our unified school district. These are incredibly rich assets with incredibly great people. The faculty at Cal State Long Beach are some of the brightest minds in the region. And I think as a city, we have to do a better job of reaching out and getting faculty and graduate students uh, and others to be part of the civic solution. I, I want to see an unprecedented relationship and an unprecedented partnership happen between the city and the university as well as the community college in projects. I want to see faculty housing built, graduate student housing built. I want to see uh, uh, you know, satellite offices for the university in downtown Long Beach. I want to see graduate students working at every level of the city on projects with managers and learning firsthand. I want to see a strengthened internship program. And These how, are the kinds how, how of will you create uh, this this nexus that I think is is, is very worthwhile? Well, the, I mean, first, I'm uniquely qualified for it. Uh, I've worked as an instructor here at okay. Cal State Long Beach. I've worked uh, as an instructor at Long Beach City College and an administrator at Long Beach City College. I know the school district. In fact, the you know the, the president of the school board is supporting me in, the, in this election. And so my job as mayor is going to be to bring all everyone together 
uh, soon after the election and really form a new partnership and a working group focused on ways of bridging the gap between the educational institutions and the city. Uh, and I, I think this is going to be an incredibly rich new partnership. It's going to be beneficial for students. It's going to be beneficial to ensuring that everyone has access to a quality education. But it's also going to be beneficial to the city. We don't have all the answers. And the experts, quite frankly, are in, are in engineering departments and other places throughout the and city. And several of our prior presidents, uh, most recently Don Parra, who was on our show, and before that, King Alexander and Robert Maxson, who you knew when, who was president when you were here, all said to a person, that without a great university, you can't have a great city. That's right. And without a great city, you can't have a great university. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what other areas would you want to focus on? Let me, let me backtrack for a second. Mayor Foster, who has vigorously embraced your campaign and endorsed, personally endorsed you for this position, on our show articulated three criteria. This is before he endorsed anyone for choosing the next mayor. One was uh, financial discipline, two was uh, executive ability or experience, and third was trust. Uh, pick a, a candidate who, you, who has those three elements. Uh, I'd like to focus for a second on executive ability or experience. Would you explain uh, to the voters what you believe your executive ability or experience is? Sure, well, it's a variety of things. I mean, first, I've been the number two guy at the city now for the past few years as vice mayor. And a as vice mayor, uh, I've been a partner with Mayor Foster in leading the city in the right direction. With, but the city council issues from the budget to public safety items. So we have been leading the city in the right direction. Mayor Foster has done a phenomenal job. I'm proud to have his support. But I know the city on the executive side. I know what needs to get done. We've managed, we've built a great new airport. We've done development. We've managed the port. So all of that's been in place. Beyond that, I've, I've, I mean, I've opened up a su successful small business in the past, so I'm, I understand the process of being a small business owner myself and, and the, the challenges. LB Post. The, uh, that's right, absolutely. Um, and I've also served in, uh, in, in management roles as well as at the educational level. So besides being a, a classroom teacher, I've served uh, as, as, a, as a dean as well as a, a manager and an administrator. So I know, obviously, about managing people, and I think it's, it's pretty clear that I have that executive experience. But it's also important that uh, a mayor is not only a good executive, but a good consensus builder. And I think it's important, you know, I, I love Mayor Foster. He's in a phenomenal job, but I'm going to be very different than Mayor Foster. How will you be different? Well, I think just everyone that knows me knows my personality. I'm a consensus builder. I think that Mayor Foster has came in with incredibly rich ex executive experience that served the time well. It's going to be my job also to be the ambassador in chief for the city. We've got to sell Long Beach again. We've got to make sure that Long Beach is globally known, that people respect our city, that Long Beach is at the top of mind at every single business out there. We've got to let people know that Long Beach is open for business. We've got to let people know all the incredibly rich assets that we have as a city. I love this town. We People love living here. We've got to tell the Long Beach story the right way. And that, that's an important distinction. Fair enough. And we'll be back with more of our show after we pause for these messages. How do you like your chances the rest of the way? I got no idea. But I do know that if we stay with Naples Rib Company, at least we won't go hungry. Coach, what do you think about some of those questionable calls tonight? Oh, yeah, but if you want a sound call, I'd call Naples Rib Company. You can't miss on that call. Then Naples Rib Company is part of your game plan? There really is nothing more motivating than a great barbecue meal at Naples Rib Company. Victory or not, Naples Rib Company, great game plan. Founded in 1976, Polly's Gourmet Coffee is Southern California's most complete gourmet coffee store. Polly's has the best tasting coffee freshly roasted every day right in the store. Plus a wide selection of teas, an in-house bakery, espresso bar, patio dining, and more. We also offer Wi-Fi, free internet access for all of our customers. Our nationwide clientele agree, when it comes to coffee, there's only one name to remember. Polly's, 4606 East 2nd Street, welcoming you into Belmont Shore. When I was a boy growing up in Italy, I had a dream to own my own store. I came to the United States, and I worked hard as a tailor. Hi, I'm Umberto. I've been in Long Beach since 1960, carrying the finest quality men's clothing. It was a long way away, but styles are just around the corner. Umberto, 2141 Belfar, Long Beach. Who needs this modern world? I can live just fine out here without the road rage and boy bands. 
Of course, I might miss my Charter HD with football on ESPN. And Walking Dead on AMC. ESPN and AMC. And, well, Shark Week on Discovery HD. But that's all. AMC, ESPN, Discovery, TBS, and Comedy Central HD. But that's it. Except for HBO HD. Charter now has over 100 HD channels and more brilliant HD shows on demand than ever.